Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where there's a galaxy of games, and we have a few of them here. And after visiting the Red Galaxy before, we're off to the Yellow, where they've managed to find some time to improve the menu. It seems to be running on some semi-custom browser, and it's all organised into categories. But the quickest of looks will tell us that there's only 26 games. And the front of the box is still trying to tell us there's 50 of them. And round the back it also tells us to expect their special editions, which are totally not demos or shareware at all. So let's do what we do best and check out a random assortment of the games, and where else can we start but with the casino and trivia games. Which has the slot games we've seen in the past, but now it has some Galaxy Video Poker, which was done by the same people as those various slot games from the last time, and it's of similar quality. Place your bet, deal some cards, select what you want to keep, and sometimes you win, but most of the time you don't. So I guess it's realistic in that sense? And outside of having some bowling alley level of animations in the corner, that's about it. It's just good family fun. So let's move on to Granny's favourite. Bingo! Which allows you to play bingo all around the world. Well, once you've earned some money to do so, that is. And you do that by... playing bingo? Why you need to play bingo to then pay to play bingo, I don't know, but uh, it's got all the excitement here. You can select between one and three boards, and then you'll find out what the winning conditions are. And then you get to hear the game's party piece. Oh, 70. The announcer calls out the numbers. I, 20. And depending on the speed that you've selected, you might need to be on the board to be able to stamp all your cards. 66. Bingo! And then once you get a bit of cash, you can finally head off to space! And it's the exact same game we've already been playing, just with a different background. But now we have to buy the boards that you want to use. And if all of this is way Three, too one, much fun for you, and you're finding two, it difficult 56. to keep up, then you can enable the five, auto mode, three, and just let it play it for you. 40, so you can five, literally just sit back and just watch oh, it go. 62. I, 22. G, Our final 60. game for the trivia section is literally win trivia, as it's win a million. Can you make it to the top of the pyramid, answering all the questions to win a pretend million? Well, spoiler alert, I can't. At the start of each round, it will randomly pick the topics, but you can replace any one of them if you think it's going to be too hard. And then you just have to tap on each one in turn and answer the question. The question is... This really feels like a home version of those quiz machines we used to see in pubs. Where you'd all used to gather around and try and answer the questions as a team, to try and win a few pounds. But uh, this one, you're not going to win anything though, are you? You do have a few things going for you, such as you can answer two questions wrong, or you've got a few hint cards. But if you get three wrong, then that's it, game over. I could see this being fun with the family all trying to get together, but it does feel quite basic. Select your category. So let's move on to the arcade section. And first up is Oxide, which hopefully will be as good as some of those other shooters that we played before, and oh no. Oh no, oh no. That background might be one of the ugliest things I think I've seen in quite some time. And I can't work out the scale of anything, as those shadows are huge. And I don't even want to bring up the fact that they don't even seem to line up with each other. I really do hate ragging on games, but this is really poor. 
is a bunch of bland 3D rendered craft with some very basic ammo types, and stock over the top explosions. This looks like something that could have been produced with the games factory. You do eventually get some other weapons, or at least I managed to find a missile upgrade, which made the combat even easier. The only unique thing I found in the game is that you only have a single life, and instead you have a very large health bar, and if you're lucky you might find some health pickups hidden behind some objects. But you can't really rely on them, because they don't show up all that often. And if you make it to the end of the level, well, you get a great big honking boss, as you might expect, and one with some very predictable patterns with its firepower. And annoyingly, they don't really give much indication that you're actually doing damage to it. It's only when parts start to smoke that you realise they've been taken out. Between the levels, you do get the chance to upgrade your craft. But the money pickups that you could have got while playing were few and far between. And so you'll probably spend most of it in upping your health, rather than being able to afford some of the better weapons. That I assume are here. You never know with these special editions. Oh, and if anyone can explain what the two prices for the items are, I'd really like to know. Let's just move on, and what we have now is Blast Through, which is obviously a Breakout or Arkanoid clone, and this is a very nicely polished game, even if the music does sound like it came from a random music library. <laughs> as it really doesn't seem to suit the game, but it really doesn't detract from it either. As the general movement is quite nice, the ball moves great, but I do think there should have been more of a dead zone in the middle of that bat. As it does feel like any impact on the left hand side will always send it to the left, and similar with the right. Normally there'd be a bit in the middle where if it hit, you'd just get that 90 degree ricochet, but that really is just nitpicking at the game. As it looks quite nice, it's got some nice touches like the explosive blocks, there's power ups and power downs, and if you see some of those red icons floating down the screen, avoid those at all costs, as one of them is an instant death. But doing that can be quite hard if you manage to grow your bat too large, so you really should try and keep it in proportion. All in all, it's a very nice take on that classic game. And even better, it even includes a level editor, which is a great little mouse driven affair where you can design your creations and then test them out straight away. Next up is something that's a little bit unique, Tile Blazer. And it's also a game that I really, really didn't enjoy. The basic idea is fine enough. You maneuver your character around the screen trying to jump on the various tiles. Now what you need to do is either try and follow the icons that will show up on the side of the screen, or try and hit multiple tiles of the same type and then smash them to get rid of them. And when you do that, it will move the line of your opposing player up the screen slightly and if it reaches the very top then it's game over. The game expects you to fall into the pits so resetting you back to the start isn't really a problem. But the issues I have is the actual movement of your player, as well as the second one constantly messing with you and it just sucks the fun out of the game. Between it randomly throwing you forward and back, you're never really getting a chance to really understand what's going on and get a plan together. It's just a massive pain to actually play. And it only has two options. You either play against the CPU, or you let the CPU play against itself. Now this might have been fun if you could have played against a mate, and possibly you can do that in the full game, I'm not sure. But as it stands, this wasn't fun, it was actually a very frustrating game to play. And when stacked up against games like Poker or Bingo, I think this might have been one of the worst experiences I've had in this collection. It might look nice, 
and you might think it would be fun to play, but somehow they managed to mess it all up. Off the back of that game, I wasn't expecting too much with the next game, Boim. And at first glance, I thought I was right, as it's another breakout style game. It's played on its side and against another person. The goal is to remove all the bricks, which will then remove the guard in the middle, so you can then try and clear up your opponent's bricks as well. And you can even take over their ball if it hits your paddle. The problem, as I think you might have noticed, is the speed of the ball. It's just so slow. Even with the various power-ups and the things that you can do to mess with your opponent, the speed of the game really does suck the enjoyment out of it. And I was about to give up on it, and then I found out the pro option in the menu, which looks like it just jumps you forward about 20 levels. But this is such an improvement. You now have two balls, and they're both moving much faster, and there is some real challenge in keeping them going. The layouts are more interesting as well. This is much closer to how the game should have started, as this is a lot of fun. Missing the ball isn't an instant game over, instead it deals damage to you, which the other player can also inflict with lightning or grenades. And if your health goes down to zero, then you'll explode and then you'll lose a life and get to continue. But there are health pickups that you can find that'll just randomly travel across the screen, as well as other items that can introduce some interesting twists. If this game looks interesting to you, then skip to Pro as you'll find a much better game there waiting for you. We now move on to the strangely named strategy games, as these feel far more like puzzle games to me, as we start with Peggy's Party. And this is, well, a puzzle game in which you have to make it to the exit. A simple to say but taxing thing to do, as you have blocks that you can pick up and then ones that you can roll, and obviously you have to stack things up to get to the exit. But the controls are a little wonky as you can only move a single step at a time, so you have to keep tapping the direction you want to travel. And it will only move when you release, not when you press, so all the movements does feel a little bit delayed as well. But if it clicks, then you'll find an interesting, if quite tricky, little game for you to play. Though if you do get stuck for too long, you can trigger a saved replay and just let it tell you how you should finish it. It's actually a nice little game that could have been much better with a few control tweaks. Looking at the rest of the menu, we find a bunch of games that all seem to share more or less the same description. And one of those games is Garrett, a title we looked at in the red video and picking one of them at random, we find a game that's very clearly based on the same premise. As you have to switch the bugs around the leaves, and if you get four or more all on the same one, then you can turn them into butterflies where they'll vanish and give you points. And it has a few of the issues that we had with Garrett, in which you can't tell when a leaf will fill up. It's just the random nature of the game, and it can really mess with you as you might be preparing a leaf to clear out a lot of points and then it'll get eaten up. So it really is very risky in trying to leave too many on the same leaf. Now I think this might be a better game than Garrett, as I think the leaves works much better than the cobwebs, but it's clear the developer had the one idea and then spun it out to several games, each with their own little twist on it, but I don't think that's enough to make you want to play all of them. So the final game in this category is Snowbound Sherry, and this, this I like. It's a simple looking game that wouldn't have looked out of place on Windows 311, but it's so much fun to play. You have to rotate the tiles around to form paths that Sherry will follow. 
Each tar that you pass over will be removed, unless it's a cross piece, so your options will get more limited the longer you go. But the idea is that you want to try and get her to pass over 8 tiles and then travel off the side of the screen, because if you do that, new tiles will show up. It might be a good one, or it might be trees, so you really have to try and plan some of your route on the other side as much as possible, as you can't even attempt to travel onto an empty square. Now this is more or less a score attack style game, where you get points for each tile you pass, and then you can collect some medals to get some bonus points as well. And obviously in resetting the screen by going off the side. Now once you've done that enough times, an end tile will show up, and travelling into it will take you on to the next level. I didn't really notice much difference between the various levels, but if there is some, please let me know. And outside of a fun little game over screen, that's pretty much it for the game. It's a simple concept that works really well, it's a fun little time waster, and I really wish there was more here that I could talk about, as I had a lot of fun playing it. But instead, we have to move on to the puzzle category, as it seems that it might be just jigsaw puzzles and word games. I'm hoping Puzzle Master might be different. And nope, it's another puzzle game, isn't it? Yep. So instead of subjecting you to some extreme jigsaw puzzles, let's check out one of the word games. Even if my dyslexia doesn't tend to go well with them. And in Word Search Mania, we seem to have quite a lot of puzzles that we can select from. But even this science based atom one, it really isn't clicking with me. But I can see it being fun for those who enjoy this type of thing. So let's move on to the last category, card games. And with just three of them, let's pick Solitaire 25. Which I'm going to guess is 25 variants on Solitaire. And I wonder if this is how they can claim they can have over 50 games on the disc. And this is actually a pretty decent collection of card games. It's split across a few categories, and there really is a lot here for you to play. But me, I enjoy a simple game of Pyramid Golf. And outside of that, I'm not really sure there's much you can say about this collection. As if you played any card games before, you probably recognise many of the ones in here. It collects some nice stats that you can check out, but I will say it did take me a while to realise that that unhappy face took me back to the selection screen. And that I feel is it, I've shown you the best games on the disc, and they really didn't live up to the red disc at all did they? The breakout clones were fun, and I really enjoyed Snowbound Sherry, but the really good games were a bit few and far between. I have more of these Galaxy of Game Discs, so you will be seeing more of them, which I'm hoping isn't sounding too much like a threat. So hopefully we will see some cooler games in the future. And if you feel I've been a bit too harsh on any of these, or if you think I was on the money, then let me know down in the comments. So until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was a collection too yellow to put anything truly good on the disc, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thanks for watching me check out this compilation CD. I've done some of these in the past, which I swear were much better, so you might want to check one of those out instead. But if you managed to enjoy this video, then there's some buttons that you can use to show your appreciation. And until next time, thank you, and I hope to see you again soon.